Do you go through a month filling out a budget sheet to see how much you have left at the end of the month to put into savings, investments, or to go towards paying off your debt? Well, let me show you a different way of looking at your personal finances. It is a way to know what you can do with your money right at the start of the month. Now, it's often called zero-based budgeting, and it's something that I have used for a while now. It helps me feel in control of my money and gives me a clear vision of where I am and where I am going. Welcome to the Looking After Your Pennies YouTube channel. My name is Charlotte Jessup, and I am a financial educator. My job is to make financial topics easy to understand so that you can make informed choices about what to do with your money. When it comes down to it, a budget is one of the most powerful tools you can have. I would even go so far to say that your budget is more important than income. Zero-based budgeting is a fantastic way to keep your money in check and know what you have to spend throughout the rest of the month. So let's start at the beginning. What is it and why is it so helpful? You take all of your income and divide it out into all the areas of your finances until nothing is left. You use all of your money, so it all serves a purpose. This is where the key change in mindset was for me. Previously, I would use a budget sheet to see trends and try and keep costs down, hoping to have more left over at the end of the month. That money was the spare money, the excess. It, well, just kind of sat there. Having more of it was the goal, but it wasn't really doing anything. I'd put it into savings, you know, for like a rainy day. Now though, I have a structure. I know what I am doing with every single penny of my money, and that feels so much better to me. It saves me having to think about all the different costs that could come up in a year, or the different things to save for. Birthdays, Christmas, school costs, car maintenance, breakdown, replacements, etc. I've got all of those things and more covered now. So here is how I do it. I take all of my income, and this is easier for someone with a fixed wage. Being self-employed, my money can go up and down, which makes it a little trickier to calculate. A trick is to work your budget a month behind if you can. So you can work from the previous month's total income and have an exact figure. So once I know what I have as an income, I start allocating what needs to go out, the essentials, the bills. So electricity, water, gas, food, insurance, TV license, all of these sorts of things. Now some of them you might pay for annually. And this is where the power of zero based budget comes into play. Take one of these annual costs. Let's say it's my car insurance and it comes in at, for easy numbers, £120 for the year. Instead of trying to remember this fact, wait for it to get close to the month that I need to pay, and then think about where I'm going to get that money from, instead I make a space for it in my savings account for car insurance and put in £10 a month. Now, I don't have to stress, remember, or even think about my insurance payment. When it comes to the time when I need to pay it, well, the money is just sat there and ready to go. We call these sinking funds, and I think they're a really key part of any budget, and particularly a zero-based budget. I do this with everything, including things like Christmas. I take the cost of Christmas, including food, presents, celebrations, travel, all of those things. Then I divide it by 12, and I add it to my budget. When making a zero-based budget for the first time, this can take a while to set up. Looking through all of your annual expenses and finding your average monthly food shop, figuring out how much you spend a year on birthday presents, etc. But once you've done it, personal finance becomes so much easier. So now, on my budget, I have the income sorted and I have the essential sorted. So now what? The money you have left here is probably less than you would have thought was spare because from before you've allocated your money into things that you don't need to pay for yet, but will do later. That means that the money you have here really could be considered your excess or spare cash. The idea of a budget for some people conjures up the idea of having to hold back and restrict yourself. 
but that doesn't have to be the case. It is a personal choice from here. Do you want to aggressively save, invest, add to your pension, you know, work towards retirement early, or do you want to live a more fruitful life now, eating out, holidays, celebrations, socialising? Here is where many budgets can go down different paths. You can start to allocate your money into the things that you want to do. If you love eating out, then decide how much you would like to spend per month doing so and allocate it. Now you know you have the money set aside for it. Once you get to the end of this process, you should see all of your money laid out and you can feel less guilty and more comfortable going out to eat. It is part of your financial budget and plan. I like to budget for emergencies too. This is your rainy day money. The washing machine breaks, the TV goes pop or the car doesn't start, this is where you go. Now it's hard to know how much to put into these emergency pots. In fact, the money from here is all very much personal preference and linked to your financial goals. I go for a mixture of knowing that I have the money there for most eventualities. I don't want to need money for something and not have it, but also don't want to have a pot of money that's labelled spare cash and just sits there without a purpose. So here is where the balance comes in. Once I feel comfortable, I have all the money I should or could need, then anything else I want to give a purpose and put to work. This is where I concentrate on trying to grow my wealth. And for me, that has taken the form of investing. Of course, it's important to know that your money can go up as well as down when you invest. Then finally, this is where I reach that magical zero number. All of my money has a place. All of my money has a purpose. And I can relax about some of the surprise costs that I used to fret about. It's a simple change, but to me, it has made a big difference to my mindset. I highly recommend trying it out. Now let's look at this a little bit differently. So the way I have just shown you is great. It works perfectly for me, but some people would like to put a little twist on this. I focused on getting all the bills, sinking funds, emergencies, and all of that covered first. But some people out there like to focus on the saving and investing first. So Warren Buffett said, don't save what is left after spending, spend what is left after saving. So this would mean putting your savings and investments into your zero-based budget first, then allocating out the rest into your essentials until you get down to zero. This is not for the faint-hearted. Therefore, if you are new to budgeting or just this method, then I would say get those bills in first. Then perhaps one day you can try switching it up. So do you use the zero-based budget method? How do you get on with it? Or do you budget in a completely different way? I would love for you to let me know in the comments. Don't forget to come and join me over on my social media channels and I will see you in the next video. Bye.